Welcome to Screen Riot. This week's movie is Double Indemnity, a film noir from 1944. This episode will contain major spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, it's available to rent or buy on all of the major streaming services. So go check it out and come back to the podcast because this is Screen Riot. Welcome back to another great episode of Screen Riots. I'm Justin, and I'm joined with co-hosts Eddie, Kyle, and John. And today we are taking a look at a film noir from 1944 called Double Indemnity. Ooh. <sighs> yes, ooh, indeed. Ooh. Baby. Um, <laughs> insurance salesman Walter Neff, played by Fred McMurray, gets roped into a murderous scheme when he falls for the sensual Phyllis Dietrichson. <laughs> Yep. That's an attractive last name. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for the Dietrichsons out there. Um, uh, so Phyllis Dietrichson is played by Barbara Stanwyck. Uh, Phyllis is intent on killing her husband and living off the fraudulent accidental death claim. However, insurance claim investigator and Walter's boss, Barton Keyes, played by Edward G. Robinson, looks into the case and gradually begins to unravel the sinister plot. And that is Double Indemnity in a Nutshell. So, yeah. Double Indemnity is one hour and 47 minutes. Um, it's not rated. It uh, actually is rated as past. Yep. <laughs> as opposed to not past, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> um, it does rank number 29 on AFM's uh, top 100 movies of all time. Wow. Which is kind of interesting. Uh, and it's directed by the late, great Billy Wilder, um, who is also one of the writers of this movie. Right. Um, he writes a lot of his own stuff. So, if you're unfamiliar with Billy Wilder, uh, he's directed this, obviously. Um, Sunset Boulevard from 1950, The Seven Year Itch from 1955, Some Like It Hot, a personal favorite of mine, 1959, mm-hmm. and uh, The Apartment, 1960. Um, this man has won two Best, direct, uh, best Director Oscars in wow. his life, and he's been nominated another six times Dang. for Best Director. Well, and, and Fred McMurray, he was also in The Apartment. Yes, you're right. As well. Yeah, and The Apartment did win Best Picture that year for 19, in 1960. So. Yeah. But we both agree, I mean, or I should say we all agree, that the award shows are pretty much lies anyway, right? Like, No. I mean, they make it up as they go along. It's Most of it's political. It's true life. Yeah. Well, no. Back then, Come maybe on, not. But yeah, it's even worse you're, back you're, then. You're mixing today versus the past. Oh, okay. So. Sure. So, <laughs> go ahead. back to baby. this movie, yes. Baby. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> double, double Indemnity. Um, at the Oscars of the 1945 Oscars, it was nominated for seven. Dang. So, pretty good. Yeah. Um, guess how many it won? None. Goose egg. Whoa, really? Zero. Oh, dang. Not a one. I am surprised. In fact, it was, um, it was nominated for Best Picture, and it was the only Best Picture nomination that didn't win another Oscar that year. Wow. I thought you were going to say it was was the only nomination, and they still didn't give it to it. (laughs) No. 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 No, None um, for you. No. (laughs) It was up for Actress, for Barbara Stanwyck. Uh, It was up for Cinematography, Best Directing, Musical Score, Sound Recording, Screenplay, and Best Picture. Huh. So Best Picture actually went to a movie called Going My Way. I've never heard of it. Yeah, I haven't either. Um, some some of the other nominees that year were uh, Gaslight, uh, oh. Since You Went Away, and Wilson. Yeah, I've heard of Gaslight. I've heard of Gaslight because it stars yeah. Eamon Bergman. But right. she's the one who won uh, Best Actress that year for oh. Gaslight. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, any actress going up against uh, Barbara Stanwyck in, for this film would have won. <laughs> you did not like Barbara I, Stanwyck's performance. No, no. <laughs> That's the really whole, I did not <laughs> like her performance. I did not like her puke face. She did like have a good every career, every man. time she was on screen. It was like I'm gonna puke. I just don't. I don't like it. I, don't like I wasn't it a big fan. All. I wasn't a big fan of her acting in this either. Um, I think my favorite actor in this was uh, Robinson. Uh, what's his name? Yep. Edward, G. Edward G. Robinson, G. Robinson. the guy yep. who played the boss. He Keys. was awesome. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Gee, yeah. I always gotta get my cigar. Gee. Yeah, it's kind of funny, by the way. I actually didn't mind the female. Like, uh, what's her name? Stanwickson? Or whatever Stanwick. her name? Stanwick. I didn't mind her in this. Phyllis. The act of the character named Phyllis. Well, no, she wasn't, like, like her, her acting was, was eh. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, she's she's no, uh, what's the other 
Love of the Proper Stranger Girl? Yeah. I yeah. can't remember her name either. What's right? the other broad? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Natalie, uh, Natalie That's Wood. That's why we don't watch Natalie Natalie Yeah, like she's no Natalie, Natalie Wood. Natalie Wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree with you. I just, uh, I preferred her performance to um, leading man guy, the, the Neff. McMurray. I, yeah, I didn't like him at all. Like the... You know, like, that stupid ass voice that you keep mimicking <laughs> was a big part of why I didn't like him. I, yeah. You know, when I was watching this, I was like, you know what? Eddie's not going to like this guy. No. He's he, not going to like him at all. Not good. He what has, do you mean? He has that stereotypical, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna get it, uh, get away with it. What do you mean? Type, I, yeah. you know. I, I don't understand. It's Walter Neff. Yeah. Like two Fs, like in Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you know the story. Baby. I don't. <laughs> Tell me. Jesus. I don't know the story either, but I know there's a... There, there's a Philadelphia story. Apparently. Wait, you're talking about Walter Neff, six foot three, no, no, no uh, distinguishing marks. No, uh, I mean, that was the dumbest. That was the worst script writing ever, by the way, where he like gave this stupid police report into the whatever that recording, recording into devices. The, yeah, that it's was called the, the dictaphone. I always forget the name of it. Yeah, thank you, the dictaphone. <laughs> I should feel like I should <laughs> you, feel, you would laugh. At that. I feel like I should remember that too. But yeah, no, that's pretty funny. I mean, I think he, the reason he gave that self describe or description of himself was because the the one guy that could uh, finger his placement as the decoy, yeah, would He's have telling. noted. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't Nino. know. Nino, Nino, that's Nino was it. his name. Yeah, but yeah. was his name? Oh, <laughs> baby, <laughs> baby, Jesus. But no, going back to. Uh, uh, Keys Edward mm-hmm. G. Robinson. Yeah, he had my favorite um, line lines of the of, of the whole film where he's in the him and um, Neff yeah. are in the president of the. If it's the line and, I'm thinking about, it's the one I actually laughed out loud. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't just one line. It was his whole spiel oh. on statistics. Oh yeah, that no, was the suicide. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. The line that I laughed at, I had to stop because I laughed so hard, and I typically don't laugh like out loud like. Like, we typically like don't laugh. Oh, but, we don't laugh. But hold on, so insurance movies are what do it for you, huh? <laughs> oh, gotta love those. Black and white insurance movies. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Insurance suicide fraud. Statistics. I think I figured out the um, problem here, oh, by the way. The suicide statistics <laughs> made him laugh. Yeah. Um, no, no, the line was um, the, the president, they're, they're in the office of the president, and the president says, uh, what's the name of the guy that was on the train? And uh, he goes, oh, well, his name was... I forget like what it is. Jackson but could, or Jackson, something. Yeah, Jackson. Yeah. He's like, oh, his name was Jackson. And yeah, Mr. Jackson. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. He goes, oh, his name was uh, Mr. Jackson, and I believe it probably still is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did say that. <laughs> I don't know why, but it just caught yeah. me off guard. Because he like, said, cause I think well, cause he said, the, I yeah. believe his name was Mr. Jackson, and he goes, I believe it still is. <laughs> it, for some reason, it, that just caught me off guard. Well, because the movie is filmed in a dark corner, and it was like the only ray of light in the whole goddamn movie, where it's like, wait, was that... Did well, he no. just make a joke? He he wanted to see uh, Neff wanted to see her again, close and without that silly staircase between oh, us. Fuck me. Yeah, I, I I laughed at that line because uh, I'm like that is so film noir. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is the epitome of film noir. Yeah, it was so, raining that night. So that yeah. that first scene, it, we see Walter go from mild day insurance salesman to almost a rapist. Yep, in oh, yeah. a span of like. 30 seconds right yeah I, I felt like he was coming on kind of strong oh uh, yeah kind of yeah he was basically okay like, so it wasn't just me no, no it wasn't just you no, no he, he was basically like yeah what husband did you already oh, kill him husband. good yeah you know i'm gonna I'll just take that anchor right off of you with my yeah. teeth yeah that was some that accelerated was, like uh, screenwriting there yeah and just his look too his complete his whole demeanor changed well i think it's okay Mansplain time. I think it was on purpose. Mansplain. Yeah, I think it was on purpose because (laughs) otherwise, how do you justify, okay, so you just met this girl. They haven't slept together. They haven't done anything with each other. I mean, to my knowledge, had they even kissed by that point? No. 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 So you have to come up with a reason for why this guy would be willing to kill this other dude for a woman he barely knows. Yeah. but He's overly obsessed with her. Ankles. Apparently. Oh yeah. Yeah, he did say Ooh. something about her a ankles. lot about her her ankle bracelet. <laughs> it's that early thirties, uh, mm-hmm. you know, being demure or being uh, oh, what's the word where you're being um, coy? Not coy, where where you're you're almost prudish, but where you don't you know you don't show any skin at all. I'm trying to remember the word for it, but yeah. anyway. Well, yeah. apparently there's an urban legend oh, about ankle bracelets back in the the thirties that um, basically said if a woman wore an ankle bracelet that that meant they were married. But they were open to suggestive men. Oh, so really? it's like tapping your foot in a men's bathroom. 
Sure. Okay. I, sort of. I, I've, I've heard. I've, I've heard. heard. Yeah. I've heard. <laughs> yeah. You, you might want to clarify that. I've heard. I've, I've heard. It was a, uh, a rumor. This, yes. Okay. I that would you. explain Does the some ankle horrible, horrible things. <laughs> <laughs> Does the ankle bracelet make noise? <laughs> I don't know. It's possible. Ching, ching, ching. I do uh, like yeah. a good ankle bracelet. Like yeah, a, so I, I don't know. That, that was just something I read that there was an urban legend that it can't be substantiated if like that was what it meant. Well, gotcha. so let's so let's assume that that's what it means for the movie. That's sure. fine. But as far as him going from like you said, you know, mild mannered uh, insurance. Didn't that make sense? That um, yeah, he yeah he basically sees the ankle he sees it as a like, door yeah. open. All right, let's yeah, because he's a he's single. Right. And, and he goes like super obsessed with this woman, which is why he's willing to commit murder. Is mm-hmm. my whole point. I mean. You, I can be into somebody and not be like, I'd murder the person that you're with in order to be with you. Like I, that typically doesn't go through my mind. So mm-hmm. he's beyond just lust. He's into obsession. Well, he wasn't sold on it at first either. It was kind of his idea though. He was the one, I mean, she had the idea. She planted the seed, but he, he ran with that fucking seed. <laughs> like he's the one who came up with the whole place. He's like, yeah, we're going to do it. Not in a stupid way. Not in a way that you're going to get caught. That's it's right. going to be, it's going to be perfect. By the way, I hate that I can do this. Not the one that can that send you straight not to real the chair. acting, by the right, way. But what, what I'm what I'm saying is, it wasn't. It took some convincing. It took her, her All initially saying that, and it took her. You know, I don't like it when he beats me. You know, gets drunk and beats me type thing, you know, so yeah. I mean, he she laid it on pretty thick. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it took him all of four lines to get to well, fall yeah. down what? that <laughs> this, this whole thing transpired in the matter of like two weeks. I know, I know. It's, uh, it's a movie. You know, June 15th. <laughs> I guess I should mention at this point that um, since we're talking about the screenwriting and the plot and all that, that this was based off of a novel, mm-hmm. which was based off of a true story. So there was a wife in 1927 who was had a boyfriend on the side, and she convinced the boyfriend to murder her husband to get the insurance double indemnity clause. Mm. Uh, and then they were going to go basically, you know, live off of the money. Mm-hmm. But they were uh, both quickly found out. Like, I think it just took a couple of days for police to capture them, figure it all out. That little man that. inside. The little man inside. Got him. Uh, and then she was uh, promptly <laughs> executed by electric chair. Uh, how lucky Yay. she was. She never had to watch the movie. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Dang, too wow. soon. Wow. <laughs> we're only like <laughs> 10 minutes into this now, thing. Now, I'll say, though, I mean, 50 grand. I, l- I looked it up and I didn't I didn't write it down because I'm, I'm dumb. But fifty grand in nineteen forty four is akin to like seven hundred and fifty two thousand dollars today. Yeah, yeah, it's like double de- that. It's a decent amount of money. Yeah, yeah. and you, you had said earlier before the show, you said that like the price of the house was thirty thousand dollars. And he was like, he was guessing the price of the house. He's like, ah, it had to have cost thirty thousand oh, dollars yeah. or something like that, yeah. which is about six hundred and six or. Uh, like I had to look it up. It's like six hundred sixty two thousand or something yeah. like that. It's so a hundred thousand would be like $1.4 million or something like that, roughly. Yeah, it'd be a lot. Yeah, because that was, that, was that was the clause if he would have had an accident and died. Yeah, I mean, it could buy a shitload of ankle bracelets. <laughs> Everyone in the city like gets it. an ankle bracelet. Yeah, that's right. Just because of poor uh, Dietrichson. <laughs> so you didn't like uh, Stanwick. What about the daughter? Because the daughter was cute. She she was not a great actress, but she was cute. Yeah, she wasn't bad. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think that she was that bad of an actress. I didn't think so. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't say I, she was she a bad was, actress. I she was she, not necessarily relatable, but like you know, she was real. Yeah, she was a she was a product of that time. A That's lot more cool. real than 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 uh, Stanwick than Neff. Fair enough. Well, yeah, the Neff. I'll give you that. Yeah, because those two side by side, it's just like, well, she's actually got some real emotion, and he's just like, yeah, yeah I'm just doing this to. Get with your stepmother, yeah. baby. She you seemed know. like she was trying to be Natalie Wood, and I mean yes. in a positive way. Yeah, whereas right. Neff was just like, "I'm, I'm doing these lines, yeah. see, and, they're, yeah. and they're paying me, they're paying me a buttload, yeah. making, making five hundred dollars a week." Like, okay. Well, yeah, you I'm also have sure. to, you also have to realize that um, McMurray, the guy who played Walter, yes. um, this was his first like bad guy role. Mm. He has played like in Disney movies and stuff. Like, yeah, he was always for the good this. guy. He was the good guy. What Disney movie was he in? Well, I, I don't know. I'd have to look him oh, up okay. again. I'm just curious. I'll get an intern to do that. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Um. So he was actually re- really reluctant to do this movie because he didn't think that he could do it. Huh. So maybe well, he was right, Eddie. <laughs> maybe he, maybe no, but, he was right. But Billy Wilder, the director, he, he basically wore him down, convinced him to, to, to try it out. Oh, yeah. the absent-minded professor. Back okay, in that was him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was... Wow, the, that was the same guy. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, I liked it more in that. 
just to say it. I will say this though, Kiss of Death, the the blonde haired guy was far more annoying than this guy was. <laughs> that douchebag, yeah, it's far more annoying as a, as an actor, as a character, just breathing far more know, annoying like than guy. than this guy who uh, Walter was his name Walter Walter, Walter Neff Walter Neff. Well, Walter Neff, but McMurray the what's his first name McMurray? Oh, uh, oh, Fred 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 McMurray, far more annoying than dog. that guy. Oh yeah, Shaggy Dog's great. Shaggy too. Dog, See, yeah. yeah, I like this guy as an as a comedian actor. Yeah, a comedy so this, actor. Yeah, this this role here was definitely not his forte. Yeah, it definitely was not in his comfort zone. He's I like, think it was comparable. God. Yeah, I, I think he was okay. I think I'd, he I think he actually fit the need for the movie and and the where and the way it, that character needed to be. I, I don't know. It's just it was a film noir. It it had to have that kind of cadence to it, and yeah. I think I think he he. He pulled it off. Well, like I said, this I think I said this the first film noir we did. That's why I've always put film noir in my mind anyway in this like 1930s crime, you know, yeah, Shane yeah. type type shit because that's what they always do. But it doesn't have to be that way. Right. I mean, that's the thing that kills me about it is it, it always seems to go that way, but it apparently doesn't have to be that way. So I would love to see a film noir just putting that out there in the in the putting it out there in the in the world in the universe <laughs> love to see a film noir where people don't talk like this see and, and yeah baby we're gonna we're gonna go to the beach and i'm gonna i'm gonna screw your brains oh i'm kidding i'm gonna i'm gonna Jeez. lick your ankle bracelet what wow <laughs> what's going on well <laughs> since we're speaking of the character walter yes um <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a librarian by the way taking me yeah. down the aisle of walter now <laughs> uh Jesus. this is the w's um no, uh, so there were a few other actors that were offered the role before him, too. Okay. Um, so, uh, Kyle, you'll probably know most of these, but um, one of them was George Raft. Um, has everybody seen Some Like It Hot? I, that's yes. the one with Marilyn Monroe, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Um, yeah. So, George uh, George Raft is the guy who plays um, Spats Malone, the oh. the mob boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, uh, Raft was offered the role before, um, uh, before McMurray was. Um, that probably would have been pretty good. It w- it would have been interesting. Um, but real quick, uh, James Cagney was also offered the Ooh. role. Um, Spencer Tracy and Gregory Peck were also uh, all more notable actors. I can't, by the way, I can't see Gregory Peck doing it. Yeah, but Cagney. Oh yeah, for Cagney sure. He would have been. Yeah, but I think he would have. I don't know. He would have been a little bit over the top from. Uh, uh, what's his name? He's Edward more, G. Robinson. He's more of that caliber, I guess. Uh, yeah. You know the the yeah. the gangster, the fast the, talking. You know, yeah, same man, you know, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, yeah. those two together, you would get mixed up and be like, okay, is this a gangster movie? Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that. I do think the guy who played Spats Malone, though, from something like a high, I just looked at his picture because I didn't remember what he looked like. Mm. I think that would have been interesting because the guy, the the McMurray guy, because he's so tall, dark, and handsome, quote unquote. Mm. Uh, I think it's a little bit believable that she would have gone for him with this guy. I think he's like uh, five yeah, foot four. Sure. Yeah, I don't see her being like. And then he was. He was. He was so dreamy. So I went for him immediately. <laughs> I don't see that uh, being a, a well, thing. Well, um, so George Raft. He, like I said, he was the first person that was uh, approached. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he had a condition. Uh oh. That he would play the role. Sans ankle bracelets. <laughs> Uh, no, um, he basically had a condition that Walter's character had to turn out to be an FBI agent undercover <laughs> at the end. Oh my! <laughs> so he, so not the book. I like the not script, the not but the uh, yeah, to go off of different. the book. <laughs> Can you? I'll do the movie, but if only if it's di- a different movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Billy Wilder hated the idea. Yeah, uh, and he said. Okay, offer rescinded. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say this though: the fact that all of those people who are pretty legendary i'm sorry but if you say james cagney i know who you're talking about fred yeah. mcmurray we just had to do an imdb search right and i still i've only heard of like two or three of his movies uh maybe the script just wasn't that good i mean for lack of a better term i mean i i can't think of anything that would stand out about this movie other than the fact that i would have loved to have been in the pitch meeting to hear them be like okay so here it is right you know open scene california okay i'm with you okay insurance <laughs> what like why the fuck would that? But you you're not gonna. Me. You're not. No, you don't have me. That's the thing. Like you know, insure double indemnity clauses are really bad. Okay. Like, no, Jesus you should have said. You should have said uh, insurance fraud. Numbers. <laughs> like yeah. just it just doesn't sound interesting at all. Well, on paper at least. <laughs> I know you guys enjoyed it. So. Uh, no, I, I did enjoy it. Um, 
the um, the other thing I was going to say, since we're talking about screenwriting, yes, is the so Billy Wilder was a co-writer for this. Um, the other person who wrote it was um, Raymond Chandler, uh, who was a respected writer at the time. Um, he was a lot of studios tried to get him to write their movies for him for them. Um, in fact, uh, it's they had a really famous public feud between the two writers, between Billy Wilder and Chandler. Um, so much so that Chandler left the project, like oh, wow. like in mid-writing. And he's basically saying, I'm never working with that guy unless <laughs> you meet these demands. Okay. And he basically got like a triple salary and all kinds of other stuff that like, like the studio has never done this to another writer, like just basically met all of his demands that he wanted and all the stuff that he hated about billy wilder was all like uh what do you call it uh superficial like he parent- smells funny uh, well sort of sort of okay. things like that like like he he wore his hat indoors okay. so he hated that this guy wore his hat because he felt <laughs> like he was always going to like just at any moment just leave for some reason and apparently he said that he would often put his crotch in his face <laughs> power move I, I, exactly i guess i was like billy wilder Wilder was just asserting his dominance That's, i mean what's the problem yeah they hated each other so much that he put his crotch in his face i guess it's like i'm the director here oh man i wish that was in the movie i just <laughs> <laughs> you know the the thing that i really enjoyed about this now it was to me a little bit long in the tooth mm. uh, especially like the first act i would say would probably be a little bit too long um, I don't really know what would be cut out, but I just felt like it was a little bit long. Yeah. But once the climax happened, once they actually killed uh, the husband, uh, that it, after that, it really started to speed up, which is actually about halfway through the movie. The suspense part of mm-hmm. it all was like when the when the car wouldn't start. They had already laid the body out across the tracks, and the car wouldn't start. I'm yeah. like, Oh crap! Yeah, you know, are, are these guys going to get it out? You know, get yeah. out alive? You know, because now they have a dead body like 15 feet in front of them. Yeah, you know, how in the world are they going to get away? What? And I, I actually chuckled at that because when they first get in the car, whenever whenever uh, Neff hides in the car, yeah. at, at the at their at the uh, Diedrich house, right? Um, I I, I was like, oh, <laughs> it'd be it'd suck if the car wouldn't start. Oh, I know. Like right? right there, I'm like, man, it would suck if the car wouldn't start. So they got to go in the other car. And he's stuck in the other car. <laughs> oh, it just funny. doesn't work, right? And then they it didn't start. Oh, that's funny. I'm like, ha, huh, that's you, hilarious. You kind of saw that coming. Yeah. So the the car starting thing is kind of interesting. That wasn't in the script. Really? Yeah. That um that was actually thought of at the moment by Billy Wilder. Um, apparently a couple days ahead, um, before that, at the end of a shooting day, uh-huh. Billy Wilder got in his car to drive home and it wouldn't start. Oh, and so he had the idea to kind of throw that in to the yeah. movie to add tension. Yeah, and with the music the playing along with it, I was just like, it was very like it had my heart pumping. I'm like, okay, are these guys gonna, you know, get away with it, or mm. you know, they just gonna leave the car? Well, then that's gonna this, this car is his. It's like how <laughs> you just right. got on the train. Like, what, what's going on here? Well, I think that was um, Mac Murray's best acting. Oh, in that was, car was, scene was in that car scene. It, it was he he said nothing but his <laughs> but his mannerisms and his facial expression i mean just him like scooting over he's like oh dear yeah <laughs> he's like oh please 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 you can see it like, in his let face me, he's like, panicking let me try it. <laughs> he's panicking with being stoic right yeah right it, it was it, it was genius when it's in i think he had like some sweat coming down on yeah. his face and all that you could see in the light um, yeah, so it's good. definitely a tension builder for sure. But yeah, I, I think I agree with you. Like once the whole plot happened after after the murder, that's yeah. when to me the movie picks the kicks into gear. Yeah, it does, so to speak. Um, and that's when I really started enjoying it. Yeah. And then I really like the the face off between keys, the the high tension moments between keys and him, um, like like in the hallway of yeah. his apartment. You know, when keys comes by randomly, and then oh yeah, and she comes in like right after she off the elevator. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. You know, she's gonna she's, she's gonna, gonna like walk in. in. Yeah. Um but then you know she hears him through the door, so she hides behind the door and then all this tension building stuff, which which I, I enjoyed. Yeah, I liked that the um it was it, that part was to me was very natural of like she was legitimately trying to hide from this guy because she even like pulled the door handle just 
very so softly or ever so softly and to just like I'm back here, mm-hmm. so don't slam the door when he's still waiting on the elevator. <laughs> right? <laughs> How awkward that would that be? He shut the door and be like, "Oh hi, <laughs> I, I'm the case that you're <laughs> that you're having questions about." <laughs> So that would be that would be pretty wild. I'm here to sign for life insurance. Yeah, hmm, he was such a good salesman. <laughs> um, it. So uh, I found this, and I uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, we were talking about how not great Stanwick looked yeah. in the movie. I thought she was kind of pretty, but I'm I'm maybe I'm I'm the odd man out on everything. Like, I thought she was okay, John. I don't know your face. <laughs> what 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 really got me? What really got me was when. Was when they was after after the door scene where she's holding the door and everything, and yeah. she gets in the apartment. Yeah, and then they go to kiss, and she's just like they're face to face, and she's just like, I don't want to. <laughs> it's like I don't want to kiss you, but she wants. Obviously, she wants to kiss him because that's in the that's in the story. But she's like, Ugh. her face looks like she's about to vomit all over him. <laughs> yeah, the kisses in this movie were uh, between Fred uh, McMurray and and Barbara Stanwyck were very off putting. Yes, they they, yeah, they were very they forced. Natural. They didn't just like I, <laughs> just grabbing her and they just just land one on. I'm like, oh man, that is very forced. I agree. Yeah, like I agree. That, but, but I still don't think she's like whatever <laughs> face John's making right now. I still don't think she looks <laughs> like guess, that. I could kind of see it. I could kind of see <laughs> Jesus. it. Um, but what I was gonna say is uh, the wig that she's wearing, is the blonde rough, wig, is yeah. pretty rough. Um, in, in fact. Uh, Billy Wilder, it was Billy Wilder's decision to have her in this wig. And oh, after about a week of filming, he basically We're... realized he didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't have the budget to basically go back and reshoot everything. Interesting. Because, I mean, I, I didn't know it was a wig. Yeah. I didn't either. Because um, I, that's, that's kind of what her natural hair looks like, in a way. I mean, there's this is her... I know our listeners at, at home can't see this, but showing a picture of mm-hmm. what she actually looks like. It's, but it's darker, I think. Because her hair is really yeah. light in the movie. It's it was really almost blonde. like a, a bleached blonde or something yeah. like that, or yeah. a platinum blonde. But yeah, this one's a little bit darker. But yeah. Well, apparently there was a high-level production member um, who, a per- uh, upon f- seeing the first set of uh, rushes that would come back from mm. the studio, um, he made a comment that I, I found kind of funny. Um so he was talking about the wig. He said, "We hired Barbara Stanwyck, but we got George Washington." <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> That's George pretty Washington funny. does make the face you're talking about, by the way, John. So maybe <laughs> so other she. people agreed with. I'm you. trying to find it. I'm flipping through here. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, um, how many actually saw like who shot him? Who shot Fred McMurray? How many? How many people saw that like way, way, way before? Oh, I did because you the, think you think Barbara Stanwyck actually shot him like when whenever he had the gunshot wound. Uh, when when we, when I first saw the gunshot wound, it's at the very beginning, right? right because right. Like, I I didn't know that she would shoot him. I I knew that there was going to be a gunshot, right? So obviously, in the back of my mind, I'm going through all the players, going, okay, well, he could shoot him, she could shoot him, yeah. That, so this person, I thought it was going to be the keys, the boyfriend, or the boyfriend oh. of. Um, the younger, the daughter, uh, Lola. Yeah, yeah uh, Nino. 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 Yeah, I thought it was going to be Nino that was going to shoot him mm-hmm. because after all that side talk of, oh well, maybe these two are in on it. You know, maybe maybe this was the whole thing to begin with, and mm-hmm. like just to throw the insurance agent under the bus. Um, the moment I realized it was when uh, Walter realizes he is off the hook. Right. When he realizes that Keys is barking up the wrong tree with his uh, his synopsis or whatever, you know, um, I was I realized oh, they're going to get into a scuffle and then she's going to shoot him. Yeah, but why why have her bring a gun to a a meeting with him? Like, I guess she does. She know that? Well, she never really loved him. Uh, yeah, she I was mean, going to kill him off. Well, anyway. we did. Well, we did find out that she basically killed the wife. Right of uh, that, I did not see coming. Yeah, that, I was like, "Oh, cow, so okay." Because yeah. that that she was the nurse of the mother, and she basically just left the windows open and had her die of pneumonia or something like mm-hmm. that. And then I then my mind started turning, and I'm like, "Oh man, okay, so she's just basically out for money on everything. She's not out for love or anything. She's right. just using people for money." Yeah, which is crazy. Which Walter basically says that in so many words to her, right? Face face in their little confrontation. 
See, I, I did see it coming because I just watched. I can't remember what it was now. I think I just watched a show that was literally the same. Um, the the episode was the same was the same premise. It was like the there was a caretaker with the with the wife. Oh, I know what it was. It was an episode of Hoarders. It, it was an Hoarders? episode of Hoarders. Yeah, the the caretaker wow. was. And this is real life, but it was the um, the woman was taking care of the husband. The mother, the wife, actually killed herself, like full on, like hung herself. And then Dang. the caretaker moved right in to spend time. <laughs> See, she's about to puke all over him. Oh God. That's, <laughs> That's how my wife looks when she goes to kiss me, John. Oh. Well, that sounds like a problem for her. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. But, uh, yeah, but the caretaker moved right in with the husband, and then the husband was, was being systematically, basically buried alive. Like, Dang. In, in orders. Yeah, so, I don't know. I kind of, having that in the back of my mind, I was yeah. like, okay, well, so she's like a Black Widow type person. Because I, I really thought that Nino was going to come in to this conversation because I thought that she hid the gun there because she knew that Nino was also going to be there Mm -hmm. as well. And it wasn't necessarily for her self protection, but it was to take him out, take uh, Neff out. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I didn't think that Stanwick was going to shoot him. I thought Nino was going to shoot him because I thought they were actually in it together. Uh, And like they actually, the, the little man inside was actually right. And Nino was the, the guy, mm-hmm. the, the I could side, the side boyfriend or something like that. But then when she shot him, and I'm like, holy cow! And then for him to stop Nino, I ba- he basically was like, okay, the game's over for me. I'm done. Mm-hmm. So let's not ruin two other people's lives. Yeah, the kid and Nino. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of a cool. At first, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Mm-hmm. Like you're just you're you have a gunshot wound and you're telling this kid to get away and stuff like that, right? Um, but at, towards the end, I'm like, okay, well that's why he did it was because he didn't want to put those two in mm-hmm. jeopardy. And so he just wanted them away from all this crap. See, nowadays he would have let, he would have let Nino take the fall and run away with Lola. Yeah, maybe that's a movie I'd be willing to watch. No, I'm <laughs> um, one I wouldn't thing, have seen it coming by the way. Really? <laughs> yeah, like, sure. <laughs> one thing I, I found, I found interesting whenever I was, I was reading up on, on this movie. Um, it originally had a different ending. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, originally, it ended with uh, Walter Neff in the gas chamber. Oh, really? Yeah, and I, I actually know. was able to find, and it was like on. It was IMDb, like a little screenshot. There's a screenshot. Interesting. Yeah. Of him actually in the in the gas chamber. Oh, okay. With they could have used it as like a uh, dream sequence of yeah. some sort. With um, what's his face? Uh, Keys standing outside the outside the gas chamber, kind of look for looking forlorn. Yeah. I mean, they shot it and then they tested it, they did um, quite well, yeah. and then uh, Billy Wilder basically said, "No, I don't really like it," um, and so he came up with the um, keys and him in the doorway where Keys lights his cigarette for him. You know that kind of yeah backwards thing. And, I did. And it I was, did. He like said that. it was more poignant. Which yeah, I, I think so I liked that because you know throughout the whole film, uh, Neff was was. Uh, lighting keys cigars he was lighting everybody's yeah everybody's he was always the one that was flipping the match you know mm-hmm. the, with his thumb which i thought was kind of cool, cool. Yeah. um but then at the end keys was lighting his yeah. last cigarette or whatever well, i like the dialogue in that scene mm-hmm. the dialogue yeah. in that scene was was not typical of the 40s well the, mm-hmm. the dialogue in that you scene know? was the only thing i really liked like the Keys is one of the only characters I like in the movie. He he actually comes across. Oh yeah, well he's being, totally my favorite character. He comes yeah. across as being the the most real. He's he seems to have the most real reactions. The the girl, the daughter, mm-hmm. uh, Lola. N- uh, no, yeah, Lola. Yeah, Lola's Lola. Daughter, she yeah. she seems she's my second. She seems to have the the, yep. the second most real interactions with people. Everybody else seems like they're on a the stage. Yeah, and in, in a bad way. You know what I mean? Um, oh, the husband, the the dead husband. I liked him too because he was. Yeah, he didn't on even, screen for twenty seconds. He didn't even seem to know he was in a movie. Yeah, like they like they just brought a guy <laughs> in. True. They're like, we're gonna ask you a series of questions. I don't want to buy insurance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is pretty much like everybody's reaction to anything. <laughs> he didn't even seem like he was. He knew he was in a movie. They killed him. He had no idea. Uh, <laughs> but in the forties, with the, with this dialogue, you don't typically hear. You really don't typically hear it up until what, like the sixties, seventies. Yeah, in movies where it's like, uh, you know, you couldn't. 
you couldn't figure this one out because the uh, it was way too close to you. Yeah, um, it was right across right across the desk from you. Yeah, and then Key says um, closer 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 than, than, that. than that, Walter. And he like he's like clutching his meaning they were friends. chest a little bit, meaning yeah. they were friends. And then Aww. Walter says, yeah. "I love you too." Yeah, and then he dies. We well, we assume we assume he dies. We don't see. That's him my die. biggest problem with the end of this movie. Is I'm like, did he die? Did he go to jail? What happens? But you like movies like that. I kind of like movies like that. With this one... <laughs> you like cerebral movies. I do. With this one, <laughs> it would have been slightly more poetic to actually know... Like, just a, a small thing. Him closing his eyes at the end. Done. But the fact that they fade out on the cig- on the cigarette, I'm like, well... Okay, so she definitely died, right? The the husband's dead, obviously. Mm-hmm. Lola and Nino are away. And then he's kind of... Is he going to jail or is he dying? Because it's not 100% set in stone. It's the only thing I didn't like. It's the only... Well, I shouldn't say the well, only thing you know, anyway, as far uh, as the ending goes. It's where uh, the um, Sopranos got their idea. That's true. Look yeah. how great that worked out for them. Everyone loves the end of the Sopranos, right? <laughs> Everybody yeah. talked about it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It got the hype. Yeah. It's it right also, up there with a the Game of Thrones ending. It also yeah. made a ton of support phone calls for the cable companies. From, for HBO. <laughs> yeah, for HBO. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. My cable just went black. Yes. yes. Exactly. <laughs> Works uh, so well. What the them. hell happened? <laughs> Jesus. Um, so a couple more things I want to mention before we get into the budget here, uh, that I found interesting. Um, so all the scenes shot in the grocery store, you remember those yeah. scenes where they're trying to be, um, yes, uh, very secretive, yeah, secretive and <laughs> disguise that they know each Including other and all, all the products on the shelf. Yeah. Yes. With the three, three aisles of this grocery store. Well, like all the products on the shelf. If you look, they're all turned around. They're all t- well, there's no like the the, the, the they're seeing the they're seeing the back of the label. What I no, found I see, see what I found interesting. I saw the labels. I I, I thought you could actually read some, but what I, what I thought was interesting was that the pricing. No matter which angle you're at in this store, the pricing is faced towards the camera. If you look in the aisles, the, the you can <laughs> okay. see ten cents on every single item, like ten cents, twenty five cents, you know, fifty cents. On every single item, and I'm well, like, that's how markets were back then. How is it possible to see this from no matter what? But no matter what angle they're shooting from, you, they're shoot, doing a close up on McMurray. You see prices everywhere. They're shooting from the front of the store, quote unquote. You see the prices. I'm like, which are they? Are the, the, the maybe prices that was move? just was maybe the low that low was, prices. Yeah, maybe <laughs> that was just sense. the subliminal messaging from the from the store. If we've got like low prices, two oh, cans man. of beans for like fifteen cents. Yeah. Anyway, so you're in, the, ahead, in, the, in, the, in the market. Yeah. The yeah. Market. So um, when they're in the grocery store, um, there's actually armed police that are just off camera while while they're filming here. Okay. Uh, uh, and the reasoning because um, they're placed there by the Paramount Studio execs because since this was shot in 1943 slash 44, mm. it was during a high food rationing because of the war. Oh. oh. oh and wow. they were afraid that extras and the film crew were going to come in and steal the props for food. Wow. Wow. So they actually had armed guards yeah, I was guarding say, food. It wasn't a real supermarket. It no, was, but it, it was, was real set. food, apparently. Oh, okay. So they're, wow. Yeah, rationing's a bitch. Yeah. Wow, that sucks. Social. Anyway, I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. I'm not even going to go so there. Keep one, on rolling, Justin. One, I'll, I'll do one more. This is a little <laughs> bit longer, um, but I, I find it interesting and funny um, before we get to the budget, Kyle. Yeah. So, all right. So in 1944, there was another film that was released called Since You Went Away. And that was produced by the famous, uh, you know, 40s and 30s producer, David O. Selznick. Mm -hmm. Um, And he took out an ad campaign in the papers with a giant headline that reads, Since You Went Away are the four most important words in movies since Gone with the Wind. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, So Selznick also produced Gone with the Wind, by the way. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So Billy Wilder, who didn't like Selznick, that pissed him off. <laughs> so he took out an ad in the papers um, with a giant headline that read, Double indemnity are the two most important words in movies since Broken Blossoms, which is referring to a classic like 1919 film from D.W. Griffith, another famous director, right? Yeah, known for Birth of the Nation. Known for Birth of a Nation, and, right. And uh, one of the most racist films ever, but yeah, cool. <laughs> okay. Very famous. Um, and, and Man to the Moon yeah, and yeah. things like that. Um, but anyway, so... This, in turn, pissed off David Oselznick, mm-hmm. and he actually considered legal action against Billy Wilder for this. Now, I'm not sure what grounds that would be, but apparently he actually kind of like looked into it and all that. I don't think he's got a case. Yeah, order in the court. Order in the court. Uh, state your problem. Uh, he was really mean to me, sir. Yeah. <laughs> he, he bullied me in the paper. In the newspaper. Did he state you by name? Not at all, but damn it, I know what he meant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, case dismissed. <laughs> so... 
so he, he was going to go look into legal action about that. But then player three enters the game. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jesus. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> player three has entered the chat room. Yeah, player three has entered the chat room. Um, Alfred Hitchcock, oh. who has had his own bad run-ins with Oselznik, <laughs> he took out an ad in the paper then after learning about these legal things. And his giant headline read, the two most important words in movies today are Billy Wilder. Wow. wow. Nice. Dang. I was like, zip. Yeah. <laughs> Point one to Alfred Hitchcock. Right? Yeah, no kidding. Holy Pretty cow. Much. Alfred Hitchcock was what, like 32 at the time? Oh, you know, I'm not sure. Because, I mean, he would have been younger. He, I mean, he was yeah. making most of his films, I think, in his 50s when he was... Th- yeah. That was in the 50s, mm-hmm. 50s or 60s, so, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So this is about the um, about the, the most accurate, or not accurate, but the the budget is not just a round number. It oh, is okay. it is exact, but it says estimated next to it. So that means we know the mob was not involved in this one. Yeah, okay. it's not a... It could be a couple mil, whatever. It the budget was nine hundred and twenty seven thousand two hundred and sixty two dollars. <laughs> wow! Like it is a very precise, very an uh, estimated exact. Yes, estimated exact budget. It, almost a million dollars back in forty four. So I was gonna say, using you guys' math from earlier, that means it was like a ten million dollar budget. Is that right? Maybe. I yeah, to, I, well, I thought John was doing math, calculator. but I think it was like ten million roughly. Yeah, I don't no, know. I, I was actually looking up Hitchcock's age. He was forty five. He was forty five. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. In yeah. forty four. He was forty five and forty four. Okay. So nice. yeah, he was born in like nineteen hundred, right? Nineteen oh one? Um eighteen ninety nine. Eighteen ninety nine. Yeah. I knew he I knew he was born right around the turn of the century. That's why I was saying I think he would have been like in his I said thirties, but then I yeah. forgot this is in forty four, wasn't right. it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm so, an idiot. With the budget being uh an estimated nine hundred twenty seven thousand two hundred and sixty two dollars. <laughs> yep. Um, do you guys think it made its money back? And probably for sure. I mean, if if this is on AFI's number twenty nine of the greatest movies of all time, mm. I, for sure it's made it because we're talking about worldwide over history, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so this is this is cumulative worldwide gross. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And do you think it was a major success, or do you think it was just kind of like a and eh, made it made its money back, or well, uh, was it is it a bomb? I'm going to say, I don't think it was a bomb, okay. but I do think that coming out in 44, the war was going on. Yeah. Right. Uh, I don't think that it was like a, a huge success right then. But I right. do think if you add in the last 80 years of them being able to make money off of it, they, the, yeah, I think that you would consider it a success. Yeah. I, I think it was probably even considered as a, considered a success in the 40s. Right. Too, because if we think about it, the 40s, televisions weren't, yeah, weren't. Well, I don't. They were a thing, but they weren't like. Not everyone had them. Not, yeah. not every. Yeah, literally, not everyone had them. Yeah, you um, have to go to the theater. You to have see to a go picture. to the theater, and I mean, you either go, you either go to the theater, theater, right, the stage, or you go to the cinema, right. Mm-hmm. Those, those were your options. Well, according to IMDb, mm-hmm. I don't know how accurate this is, but you know the numbers there, and it's on IMDb. That's what we got to go by. The worldwide gross, cumulative worldwide gross, is thirteen thousand eight hundred eighty-six dollars. What? Wow. Yeah. That, so I'm I not really that's... sure if that's the case or or what. Or IMDb had had somebody edit this and it was just like they didn't know what the hell they were talking about. So according to that, yeah, it was a bomb. It was a bomb, majorly major. But I, I... and like Eddie said, was like it could have been, it could have been the war. Mm-hmm. You know it. it Nobody was really going to movies, but well, I don't I, know. I will say this too: you're saying it's number twenty nine on AFI's best movies of all time. It, it ranks like in a lot of those type of, you know, the movies you got to see before you die. Roger yeah. Ebert's list. I've never heard of this movie. Really? Until, oh, really? until you suggested it last week, I've never heard of it. Hmm. So hmm. take that for what it's worth. I mean, I'm, right. I'm not a film noir guy. I'm not a 1940s movie guy in particular. I mean, there's some that I like from back then, but it's not much. So, I mean, granted, I'm biased, obviously, but I've never heard of it. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm I not really 100% surprised. I am surprised that it's as low as it is. Yeah. Like, right. I'm, I'm surprised they apparently took, like, an 85% loss. Like, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. you know. I mean, on on Wikipedia, anyway, so I was just about to uh, say this. Now, they say the budget was around 980000 which mm-hmm. is about pretty close to IMDb's. Mm-hmm. Um, but they said the box office was about five million. 
That sounds more so accurate. To that's me. I don't a, know where that thirteen. That's 000. a huge jump. <laughs> it's a huge jump, but five million over eighty years. I right. believe that number a lot more. Yeah. than thirteen grand. I'm wondering. Yeah. I'm wondering if that thirteen thousand was box office, like actual box actual office. Actual box office. Whenever like you were paying like a nickel opening right. weekend. Yeah. That's so possible. like you know. Yeah. Like, a million people saw it, but they had only made thirteen thousand dollars because so <laughs> making a nickel per person. So right. do real quick um, inflation calculator. Um, thirteen grand. Nineteen forty four. Yeah, thirteen grand. Okay. Well, 13. it's only going to be it's only going to be like uh, eight hundred or five hundred grand because it was thirty thousand was six hundred. Yeah. Yeah, six hundred and sixty two. So it's going to be it's going to be less than that. It's going to be like two fifty. Right. You're looking at as soon as I get there. No worries. Uh, one hundred ninety-four thousand six hundred and seven dollars. Yeah, so it's not that. I'm I'm guessing it's the actual box office. Yeah, like it's yeah. the actual like while it was in theaters, it, it on grossed, Wikipedia. Yeah, it grossed thirteen be. grand. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have a source on it, so I'm not really sure. So this is kind of a an up in the air. Uh, was it successful or not? But I would say it was. A I, w- I would say it's successful, especially getting on tons of lists, like I was saying earlier. And well, success. But we're we're going off monetary monetary success. success. Well, but that's yeah. what I was gonna say. I mean. In a lot of ways, if you're going to judge success for an 80 year old movie, that again, five cents to be able to go see it when it was in the box, when it was actually in the theaters, I should say, you would want to look at like cult status and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would say that Wizard of Oz was both successful at the box o- box office and successful like across the the time of film. You know what I mean? Right. Across uh, all time, I should say, of film. Uh, well, whereas, like Rocky Horror Picture was a. Box bomb office, at the box. bomb, yeah, but has been but successful cult as a classic cult. now. Yeah, yeah so. same with the room in the room, yeah, <laughs> which is awful in all ways. <laughs> There's nothing that might be on the list. Too nice. Oh uh, God, you would, you would, <laughs> might, oh, maybe. I'm gonna I might just for the funsies of it all. God, yeah. Um. It. So Rotten Tomatoes. Uh. So the critics give Double Indemnity a 97, percent mm-hmm. and the uh, audience gives it a 95. percent yeah. So both mid to high 90s. It's mm-hmm. not surprising from the critics just because it's on these top 100 lists. Yeah. So I got to be honest, I, and I know this is going to be bad, but I don't know why. Like I I've seen It's movies, just not your cup of tea. No, no, but I've but I'm comparing it to other movies from that time. I don't see it as being a standout. I don't see anything in that movie that's like, "Oh my god, that's shock. I cannot believe that's totally different than any other movie I've ever seen from that time." I don't see that. So I don't know why it would make that list. I I would love to know what the reasoning for it to be, especially number twenty nine. What the reasoning is? It's, you know what I mean? It's people's votes. Is that's all it is? That's all it is. Okay. Because like Love with a Proper Stranger, there was stuff about that movie that I'm like, okay, comparing that against other films of the time, they did things that I I have not seen in other films from the time. I could see that being high up on the list because the lists are you know it's like it's first of all, the lists are compiled of people who. Who want to actually go on a website and with lists with of lists people. of movies and go? Yeah. Yes, I liked it. Yes, I liked it. Yes, yeah. I liked it. I hear you. And then so you have to. So that's already narrowing it down to a very specific group of you know yeah, nerds like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll just read like around that area of okay. the AFI just to give you an idea. So like number twenty five is the Killing Mockingbird. Mm-hmm. Number twenty six is Mister Smith. Mister Smith goes to Washington. Yep. Twenty seven is High Noon. Twenty eight is All About Eve. 29 is Double Indemnity, 30 is Apocalypse Now, 31, The Maltese Falcon, 32, The Godfather Part 2, uh, 33, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, 34, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, 35, Annie Hall. Okay. Wow. Out of that list, again, I that, that You've actually, heard of probably all those except Double That makes Indemnity. it more gray as to why this movie is on that list. <laughs> yeah. I, there's one other movie on there I wasn't sure about, All About Eve. I don't know that movie. Yeah. That was uh, 1960, I believe. Okay. I don't know that one. 1950. But, but every other movie on that list, I'm like, all of those were groundbreaking yeah. in a lot of ways. I mean, am I wrong? Am I lying or no. am I wrong? I mean, what do you no. guys think? I mean, I... You're not wrong. You're not right, but you're not wrong. Yeah, I can, no, I'll take that. I mean, well, this I is mean, it's all subjective. I know but that, yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, I just I'm I'm very confused by why it would be on that list. I don't yeah. get it. Well, let's go ahead and move to what our scores are for Double Indemnity and uh, Indemnity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so since Jesus. I picked this, I guess I will start. So uh, I enjoyed this. Um, this is actually my second time seeing this, but it's been so long; it's almost like it was a new movie. Mm-hmm. Um. So maybe I haven't seen the whole thing, but uh, I did enjoy it. Um, I think you nailed it. Like right when uh, Mr. Dietrich dies, the movie just kicks in right. a lot. Um, I didn't like the 
I didn't like Stanwick so much. Mm-hmm. Um, her character was kind of annoying to me. Uh, but Mr. Keys kind of like he was a scene stealer to me. Like yeah. anytime he was on camera, like I was really paying attention to what he was saying, and I, and I, I, I enjoyed his banter and his his dialogue and and again like i said that one line that he gives about mr jackson's name still being mr jackson's name yeah <laughs> made me laugh out loud for some reason um now this i mentioned earlier that this was nominated for best cinematography that i don't get um i'd have to go and look to what see what the other movies were nominated to just to in my own mind figure out why mm-hmm. i didn't see anything in here that was like groundbreaking or even just interesting, really. Everything seemed to be kind of straightforward to yeah. me. Medium shots, long shots, yeah. and uh, formulaic, and very yeah, very flat level shooting. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So that I'm kind of confused about, but um, I'm gonna give this an eight. Okay, just a solid eight. <laughs> I wish we were on video to see. I know Eddie's to see face Eddie's right face. Right oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> so I'm not on that scale no, that you're Justin's not. on. Uh, like I said, I enjoyed it. Um, I I could see myself watching this again uh, in the future. Okay, okay. Well, here I go. Uh, wow. So I did not enjoy it as much. Right. Um, I found not just the cinematography. Is this where I mute your mic? No, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can. We need to start taking bets of how of how low Eddie's gonna score. How the low movie. will he go? Well, just, Kyle's just happy because it's not his movie. Like Kyle's, I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put a score behind my back. <laughs> I just want to point out I too. It, I want to see if I'm, if he's right. Uh, anyway, so I found not just the cinematography formulaic. I found the the story kind of obvious. Now, granted, I'm taking into account. I know you guys don't do this, but I'm taking into account against all time. I know that in the 1940s, this movie was not formulaic, so it kind of it didn't really get hurt by that. But for me, I don't feel like this is a new story. Like, I feel like I've heard it in elements. Well, yeah. And I know I know that they're ripping off double indemnity now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't lose anything because of that. So, I mean, but it felt it felt like something I'd seen before. Now, do the other movies lose things, lose credibility? Yeah, I, I compare it against other movies. You guys <laughs> don't do that. And here are my scores. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> um, I'm not a huge fan of film noir. I felt like it was way too dark in certain areas. Um, and then kind of interestingly super bright in certain areas where I was like, wait, am I watching film noir or not? Um, I wasn't real fond of the script, except for the scene that you pointed out. I like the script. I like the, the ending shot. I really do like the, the conversation they had there. I wish that Lola's lines and Keys's lines in that ending shot were the whole fucking movie. Like, I wish they had just been like, okay, the way these two characters talk is how everyone's going to talk. Okay, guys, go. And then it would have been a natural, like, Hey, I kind of like you. Oh, I like you too. As opposed to like, yeah, see, baby, we're going to do this. We're going to go out. We're going to go out with a bang. Like, oh my God, it's so, <laughs> it's so bad. It's just not my not my cup of tea. Uh, that being said, it was watchable. watchable. Uh, I do not find it rewatchable. I do not find myself ever going back to this movie about insurance. <laughs> Don't think I'll be doing that. Um, so for me, it was a three. Three, okay. Three. How close Eddie. were we at? Two. Oh no, not that. Low. I was thinking it was. Two. It was watchable. It wasn't the Devil's Reign. Originally, here. <laughs> I was like one and a half, but I was like, no, I'll give it a half a point. Well, I told you it didn't go down any points because uh, it didn't lose anything on the plot. Because I made my guess before I heard that. Fair enough. Fair True. Enough. <laughs> go ahead, uh, Kyle. So, Kyle, you're next. Yeah. So I, I went and uh, saw this with my wife. It was part of the TCM Fathom events. Right. Um, it was held at one of our local theaters here. They they typically do like Maltese Falcon, uh, African Queen. They did one with. Um, um, Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory. You know, they do oh, okay. like a lot of the old classic Classics. movies. Um, but we went and saw it, and it was the first time that um, my wife had seen it too. So it was kind of like a s- surprise for both of us. Hmm. Um, the funny story, though, is when we first saw it there, the digital file that they were playing it from got corrupt and it, it like shut off. And it was right after uh, Stanwick fired the shot. Oh, really? And so we thought in that room because it was very dark you know he was starting to close all the curtains and everything and after that shot it just went black Mm. and we didn't hear anything and we're like oh well this is very suspenseful like what happened is this the end of the movie or whatever but no it's just the file minutes later the file just crashed and we're like 
okay what what's going on so like everybody's just quiet and like waiting for something to happen <laughs> it is a very i've been in a in a theater where that has happened it's, it's just very completely awkward. it just completely shut off and we're like okay what what now what what do now you know but yeah so they ended up getting back to the part and we ended up finishing the movie but um, this is actually the first time that I've watched it all the way through without any glitches. <laughs> any interruptions. Uh, and it, it, it was actually, I would say probably better the second time. Um, the first time, uh, it was just, it was kind of like, you know, like I said, it was long in the tooth in the very beginning and it was really long in the theaters. Mm. Um, but, um, uh, just because of that. Well, when you have to wait for cut. a computer to reboot. Yeah. yeah. And it kind of lost the, the rhythm in yeah, a way and so like the second time you got to feel like everything all at once right. um so I, I i really enjoyed it um i'm, I'm gonna give this a seven eight okay a 7.8 for kyle john this was my first time watching the film and i really enjoyed it um i was surprised because i'm not i'm not typically like yeah this is great you know um to a, a noir film but uh i really enjoyed it i actually got wrapped up in the story yes it was slow at the beginning but i was actually interested in it so i didn't mm. really think about the the length until i started analyzing it with the you know the show in mind um i really loved like i said like, like i said before i really loved um edward g robinson i think he uh his scenes were the um not the glue that held the film together, but the uh, the train that made the film go forward. Okay, right. I think without him, without him and how he, his delivery, it doesn't. It the film wouldn't work. You're talking about mm. keys, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about keys. Yeah, yeah, without keys, it's almost unwatchable. Yeah, I yeah. Wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far, but well, I mean, I, I I don't think it would be. It wouldn't be as it, entertaining. It wouldn't be no. as entertaining. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be as connected, and it would be like struggling to move kid to keep moving forward. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I think that um, I might actually because because I, I liked this this one so much I might actually go check out the uh, made for TV 1973 remake of this. Oh, I heard that that didn't get made. Oh, it got oh, it made. Did? Oh, okay. it got made. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, so I might I might try to try to track that down somewhere. <laughs> And uh, see if I see if uh, we can't uh, add it to the list. It's got for, er- just for Eddie. It's got Ernest yeah. Borgnine and William Shatner in it. <laughs> but it's probably in color, so that might, watch it. it is in it, color. It, it might help him out a little bit because he doesn't <laughs> do like realize, black and white movies. You do realize I do like black and white movies, just not shitty ones. Go ahead, John, please. <laughs> wow. So, so all that being said, besides for Eddie's uh, Eddie's uh, shitty movie comment, um, I'm going to give this one a seven point five. Okay, so a seven point five for John. So that means that double indemnity gets a 6.6 on the average. Thanks, Eddie. Which I think is a little <laughs> low, but yeah. for this movie. Just way to, t- way to bring it down. <laughs> bring it home. You yeah. know, yeah. Home. one more little interesting fact about uh, Edward Robinson. Um, he almost didn't do this picture. Ooh, really? Um, he, he was offered the role, and he realized that he was going to be third build, and he almost didn't take the picture... The, the role because of that. Wow. But then he found out that he was going to be paid triple <laughs> what Stanwick and McMurray were being paid, and he had to do less work. Yeah, as there's per, probably So then up. he was Jesus. like, okay. Oh, oh, all right. Oh, money's good. Okay. Third billing's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of interesting. Wow. <laughs> so, um, John, basically, uh, you're it, right? It's, it's me. Deep. So, last yeah, this yeah, round. Beep. Yep. <laughs> Let's see what genre. So let's you see got. what genre you have to Hoping pick for from. Horror. Okay, here I go. Horrors. Ooh. Horrors. Mystery. Mystery. Okay. Mystery. Let's Mystery see. horror, right? No. <laughs> it was almost horror. <laughs> it was almost horror. It was very, very close. Um. Okay. Mystery. I'm going to select for your viewing pleasure. Bridge of Spies oh, okay. from 2015. Nice. Okay. I almost watched it this weekend, actually. That's funny. Well, good that you didn't, because yep. you'll have to watch it again. The synopsis is, during the Cold War, an American lawyer is recruited to defend an arrested Soviet spy in court and then help the CIA facilitate an exchange of the spy for the Soviet-captured American U-2 spy plane pilot, Francis Gary Powers. Cool. Very cool. 
So if you want to follow along with the Screen Riot crew, just go to JustWatch.com and you can look up Bridge of Spies and you can see all the places that it is currently streaming or available for rent or purchase. And don't forget, uh, if you ever want to see a history of all of our reviews that we've done, just go to the AmericanPodcasting.net website, click on Shows, click on Screen Riot, and you can see all of our reviews that we've done and all of the scores that we've given and order the table however you want. It's kind of cool. Uh, we were actually doing that in the office today earlier and... Found some interesting things. I was going to say, some interesting data was Interesting uh, data was when you're looking at that table, yeah. Eddie so, hates my movies. <laughs> <laughs> let's so we, so let me, we have the data to prove it? Let, yes. me, let me rephrase yes. that for you from my perspective. Kyle picks bad movies. Go ahead. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm just saying it's an interesting way to look at the movies that we review. Um, go check it out. It's pretty interesting. Um, so, yep. So thanks for listening, and uh, join us next week for Bridge of Spies. There's always two sides, Kyle. <laughs> See, okay. ya. See ya. See ya.